Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Dr. Downey, and today we're going to discuss the pill's effect on your testosterone. So essentially I'm talking about the combined oral contraceptive pill, one of the most commonly used forms of contraceptive in women. But not only will we look at testosterone, we'll look at the pill's effect on other hormones. So a lot of the research I will be citing is from this study right here. And if you want to read the paper for yourself, you can simply look online. However, I don't think it's free anymore. So a lot of people will have their own opinions on whether or not if the pill does decrease testosterone levels, whether or not this will have an effect on your libido and athletic performance. I've made a previous video on the pill and its effect on your athletic performance, so if you are interested in that, I would suggest watching it. In terms of libido, I'll speak about that briefly at the end of this video. So essentially, the study looked at two groups of athletic women, and the importance of athletic women in this scenario is that a lot of people think that being healthy and athletic might offset the effects of the pill. So essentially, there were two groups. One was given the COC, or Combined Oral Contraceptive Pill, and the other group was given placebo. They were treated for three months, so essentially had three cycles, and then serum levels of hormones were looked at. The purpose of this study isn't that of what we're looking at. This study wanted to see if the pill had an effect on serum hormone markers, which would change them to an extent where it would consider them doping. But long story short, they found the pill didn't have these effects and that they would be safe and you wouldn't get caught for falsely doping. So, in terms of the results, it's not surprising that the pill does decrease your testosterone levels. As it did in this study, it decreased the testosterone levels by 30%, and this value reached statistical significance. And this is easily explained by the fact that estrogen will cause negative feedback in the pituitary and result in decreased testosterone levels via the mechanism of negative feedback. But again, it's important to highlight that, that the ovaries actually don't produce much testosterone, if any at all, and a lot of it is produced by the adrenal glands. So again, this was used to explain the fact that the pill shouldn't decrease your testosterone levels. But from these results, it seems that testosterone decreases them quite significantly. Again, DHT was decreased, and DHT is thought to play quite an important role in libido as well as muscle maturity and muscle size. Again, they looked at androstenione, I can't say it, but essentially that hormone also decreased. And I will show the table here. So essentially what we can see in the COC group, as noted at the top, is that there was suppression at the pituitary. And this is shown by the decrease in FSH as well as LH. And as we can see right below that is testosterone decreased significantly and SHBG increased quite a lot. Now people have their own theories about raised SHBG levels. Some say it's beneficial, some say it isn't, but I'm just going to leave that result out there. What's interesting, however, is that your estradiol, or E2, also decreased significantly, from 100 to 19. And so did estrone, or E1. But it didn't to the same effect as estradiol. And it is postulated that the fact that estrone levels stay high in relation to estradiol, then it is in fact not the estradiol that causes the issues with thrombosis, and then it might be the raised estrone levels. This is important to note in those using boldenone because whilst it decreases your estradiol levels, it shoots your estrone levels up, which means that it is quite dangerous from that aspect. What we can see here also is that DHT decreases quite significantly, and so does your A4 or androstenodione. What's interesting to note, however not surprising, in that is that in the placebo group, during the ovulation phase of their menstrual cycle, which is essentially halfway through your cycle, testosterone levels were significantly increased. But the study is limited by the fact that there are many different combined oral contraceptive formulations, and the one you take might not be similar to the one used in this study. The one used in the study contained 150 micrograms of levonorgestrel, 
and 30 micrograms of es ethanol estradiol. This is quite a commonly used formulation. So, what does this mean though? Now we know that it does decrease your testosterone levels, but what does this mean in the grand scheme of things? Does this decrease in testosterone have a significant impact on my athletic capability? Do, will this mean that it decreases your libido? Well, in terms of your athletic capability, as I said at the beginning of this video, I've made a video, but it seems to have an impact on your athletic capability. It seems to increase hypertrophy of the muscle, however, decrease recovery time, which seems to be a massive negative to the combined oral contraceptive pill, especially in athletes. But in terms of libido, there have been many high quality studies that show that the pill actually might not decrease your libido, but if we were to take these results, the decrease in testosterone logically would mean your libido would decrease, but in reality or in a clinical setting, this not, might not be the case. Evidence which suggests that it might not have much of an effect on a person's libido. So let me know what you think about these results, whether or not it's significant at all, whether or not it should be important, and I'll see you in the next video.